ages back, probably at least a year or so ago, I did a video on Dragon Drag and Drop. This was a simple GTK3 window to provide drag and drop functionality to applications that otherwise wouldn't have it, like a CLA application. It is not a tool for everyone, but for those people who needed it, it did bridge the gap that otherwise wouldn't be there. And it works really, really well. The only issue with it is it's not really in development anymore, and it's on GTK3. So it's probably always going to be GTK3. And today, we are looking at another application that does pretty much the same thing, but this time in GTK4. This is Rip Drag, which, for what it does, I think is a pretty terrible name. I guess it's a play on names like Rip Grep, which is a grep replacement, but doesn't make any sense in that case. And I'm going to try not to say Rip Grep throughout the rest of this video. So the simple usage of this is pretty straightforward. So if we go and do rip drag, we can then list out the files I want to be able to drag. Let's say my ZSH env. And then this is going to work pretty much like any sort of window where you can drag something. Let's say I have a file manager here, and let's say I want to drag this file into this window. Well, I can drag the file, and there we go. It moves that file into that place. Now, obviously, the specific interaction of dragging a file into a window is going to depend on the window you are dragging to. Let's say I have something like Discord open. In that case, I can then go and actually, you know, send that file in that chat. But the important thing is this is going to operate the same way as anything you're trying to drag from. But you don't just have to open it with a single file. If we go and have a space separated list, then we can go and have multiple things in here. Let's go and run it again. This time, there are two files. Now, the default interaction of a group is to drag the files independently. So if I drag this one in, it's only dragging in that file. If I drag the other one in, it's only dragging in that file. However, you can treat everything as a singular group. If we pass in the dash lowercase a option, now it's still going to show everything together here, but if we drag it, it's going to drag everything at the exact same time. And that can also be combined with the dash capital A option, which just shows the number of elements, not what they individually are. And hey, if you wanted to, you could just go and run it on every single file in the folder with the asterisk. Now, sometimes this is going to take a bit of time to load, but it seems like it was optimized since I actually last used it. Also, you may notice that folders are going to work in here as well. Once again, the way they interact with different applications depends on the application you're actually dragging to. Now, this isn't the main purpose of the application, but you might notice as you go over things, they are going to be highlighted. If you click on one of these files rather than dragging it, it is going to open up that file. That is going to be using your standard default MIME applications that pretty much anything else in your system is going to be using, like your GUI file manager and things like that. There's no special configuration to make it work like that in the application. But what if you don't want to just drag from the window, you want to drag to the window? Well, that can be done as well. If we go and pass in the dash T option, this is going to change it from being a source into being a target. Now it says drop your files here. Let's grab a random one like this one, and it's going to print out the path of the file, but it doesn't actually show it in the window itself. If you want to have it be in the window, also pass in the dash K option, the keep option. Let's try that once again. Let's drag in this one, and then we can actually drag that file out of the window into another window. And the other thing you might want to do here is change the format of this file path. If we go and pass in the dash P option, this is going to make it be more like the typical file path you're used to seeing, rather than being explicitly a file path. Now, some of you who made it this far might be asking, why does this exist? Why would you ever want to drag from a CLI application? Well, let's say you mainly use a terminal file manager, Ranger, LF, NNN, doesn't matter which one you're using. And you don't want to lose out on functionality like dragging that file into a Discord window or into a browser window or into a video editor. Well, this can bridge that gap and allow you to keep using that terminal file manager 
and still have that dragging functionality. Personally, I like to interact with GUI applications using a GUI, but I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to do everything you can from the terminal. The point of this isn't about replacing GUIs or replacing TUIs or forcing you to use anything you don't want to be using. The whole point is bridging the gap between your workflow, which might be heavily involving the terminal, and the GUI workflow, which is more and more typical as we go further and further into the future. Now, when I said this can get weird with big folders, the most obvious place this happens is anywhere that has a lot of images. For example, my screenshots folder. This is gonna take a bit of time. And the reason for that is it's not using a generic thumbnail for every single image. It's using the image itself. So it has to go and load it and shrink it down and all of that fun stuff. If you wanna make sure that doesn't happen, the best way to deal with that is passing in the dash D option. This will disable that thumbnail generation and just use the default image icon. Now, another thing we've seen this entire time is every time we drag a file out of the window, the window stays open. But you may not want that functionality, you may want it to be instantly closing. The way we do that is passing in the dash X option. As soon as we drag something out, the window instantly closes, which generally is probably the interaction you're going to want to have, unless there are cases where for some reason you want to individually drag out certain files. Now, by default, you are unable to resize the window, and this is by design. To unlock the resizing, this is done with the dash R option. Now, with my tiler, it drops out of floating. I don't know why that happens. Tilers can just be weird sometimes. But we can go and resize this now as much as we want. The other option is changing the default size with the dash H option for the height and dash W for the width. Also, another really cool thing, it describes itself as feature-to-feature -feature compatible with Dragon while being written in modern Rust, this is one of the main reasons that I've made it, and GTK4. There is one thing missing, dash dash on top, just because of a limitation in GTK4. But this application, besides that feature, is basically a drop-in replacement for working with Dragon. If you want to use GTK3, try out Dragon. If you want to use GTK4, swap it out and go and use RipDrag. RipDrag, like with Dragon, is absolutely not a tool for everyone. In fact, for most people, it's probably completely useless. But for those people who have a weird terminal GUI sort of workflow, this might be worth looking at if you want to lean more into that terminal side and not have to rely on these GUI applications when you just really don't want to. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you making use of Dragon? Are you making use of Rip Drag? Are you going to try one over the other? I would love to know. Also, if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, could you get my Patreon, subscribe, send like pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody on Games. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.